the current state of US radio. So from where we're sitting, it looks um, reasonably bleak. Is that a fair assessment or? Um, I, you know, I don't know that I would call that uh, fair. I think sometimes when you read the stuff that I write and others write, which is intentionally designed to provoke and, and punch this thing forward, you can get yep. the, you can gain the conclusion that, well, nobody's listening. And if nobody were yep. listening, I wouldn't be doing it. I think people are listening. Yep. Um, yep. That's not to say everything's hunky-dory, as we say in the States. Um, yep. I, the reality is that uh, you know, the average listener in the U.S., the average consumer in the U.S., isn't as engaged in the world of radio uh, as they used to be years ago. Um, there are metrics yeah. which indicate that quite clearly. Now, yes. I look at that and I say, well, you know, is that a problem or is that an opportunity for a strategy and a solution? And I like to think it's the latter. Yeah, we and, and and we can see that that's how that's how your thinking works, and that's that's why we're we're all champions of of what you're doing over there. So Pandora and Spotify are not on the radar yet here in Australia. Um, so take us through the challenges of, of these new services and 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 what they you know what they present as a challenge for for your industry in, in America. Um, the the import of things like Spotify, things like Slacker, things like Pandora is that they offer new compelling solutions to people. Um, to, to the problems that consumers face, um, the way those consumers want to address those problems. It's as simple as that. Um, sure. To, to, once upon a time, as you know, in the U.S., uh, radio was, uh, you know, 15 and 30 minute comedy and, and dramatic programs. It was only after television came in that radio kind of pivoted to the world of music and found a new mm. thing that it can be famous for and that was mm. hugely successful. But you know, just because something is always a certain way doesn't mean it always will have to be a certain way. In the yep. long in the long run, people are going to be interested to this thing we call radio, whatever that means, because of everything it does across all its platforms and everything it does between the songs. Unless you're thinking across all the platforms and unless you're thinking between the songs, you're naive and you're a sucker for Pandora, you're a sucker for Spotify, you're a sucker for Slacker, you're, you're a sucker for all these solutions to very real problems that consumers have. I mean, these are technology companies that know how to create technology. They don't necessarily know how to create entertainment, and they don't necessarily know how to uh, uh, communicate and connect with human beings. Um, you know, you're not going to beat a Pandora or a Spotify um, by by playing more music and winning a commercial free battle. And it seemed that that was that the one missing ingredient when I was there was just a distinct lack of talent. Uh, you know, you talked about the importance of what happens in between the songs, and I didn't get a sense. Uh, and look, and I didn't do a full trip of the states. I'm sure there's some sure. fantastic shows, but I didn't get a sense that there was a focus on on talent. And and you know, from our perspective, we look at it and go, you know, the difference between our successful stations and our stations that are struggling, it, it starts and ends with our breakfast shows. Uh, and I didn't get a sense that there was a lot going on there in terms of talent development and and and, and a focus on where that next generation of new people are coming through. Well, and, and you know, there's some, been some stuff in my blog on that very topic. I think yeah, in, gen in yep. general, just as there's a ton of talent in Australia, there's a ton and a half of talent in the U.S. The problem yeah. is, the problem is not just finding it, because the thing about talent that you know is talent makes itself easy to find. Talent goes out of its way to be found. That's the nature of talent. These are people mm. who are. Who, who work really hard, who invest a lot of effort and energy to be famous. I mean, the stories you hear about the, the, the well-known talents in the U.S., the Dave Ramseys, the, you know, even the Rush Limbaugh's, the Howard Stearns, these are people who've gone through hell and have come back in order to achieve what they've achieved. They didn't stroll into this, and they weren't necessarily recruited earlier in their career by someone with a lot of vision. These are people who work their butts off. Those people are still out there. The problem is that there's not uh, as much interest in them today as there used to be in the past. Mm -hmm. um, there's not as much attention to that recruiting process as in the past. There's a big bias today towards a quick fix, a quick Arbitron hit, the awareness that these PPM devices show you a different number every week, every month, every week, and you can make an impact rapidly if you've got the right music formula. And you're doing right. it the right way. And I mean, this is certainly true. The problem, ultimately, quite frankly, is that we've got this, this, this ratings-driven, this arbitron-driven ratings methodology, which forces people to play the ratings game, not the audience game. 
I mean, so that, short term versus long term. It's short term versus long term. It's today's ratings methodology versus tomorrow's mm. monetization methodology. I mean, yeah, right. Pandora is doing what it's doing without having any place in Arbitron at all. Now, in the future, maybe that will change. Maybe they will have a seat at the Arbitron table in the future. But even if they do, uh, they will be monetizing their audience in a in a materially different way, um, at least in part than over-the-air broadcast does because they know in any given market, they know where you are, they know your gender, they know your age. They know more yeah. about you than that, but it starts there. And that's those are uh, three more uh, units than the average broadcaster knows about any of its audience, let alone all of them. What I say to you is the problem is with our definition of radio. That's the problem. The problem yeah. is that we're not in the radio business. We're in the media business. We're in the media business. Television also is in the media business. The reason why your company now has broadcast television, uh, I, would as, I would assume cable or satellite in addition to the mix uh, provided by radio, is because your company recognizes that you're not in the radio business alone anymore, that you're trying to yep. round these things out so that you can synergize along the way. That's the way it's going to be. Um, there is no such thing as radio, as I like to say. There's no such thing as television. There's no such thing as digital. All these things cross each other's lines. What, what, what unifies them across those boundaries are the ideas. And, and those ideas come from people, creative, mm. inspirational, talented people. Okay, and those ideas can be manifested across any, and I would argue, all of those platforms, not just by repurposing, okay, which is the way we usually think. Well, I've got my radio show, so let me stick a podcast on the website. No, 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 no. By reimagining, you know, by reformulating things, by adding new extensions to things, by by you know the TV show that has the iPhone app, which is different from the TV show. You know, but complementary yep. to the TV show. MTV now has a platform they just kicked out. I can't remember what it's called in the U.S. that allows you to basically engage with the the individual shows you're watching while they're on without distracting you from the show. So right. they, they've got stuff for you to do on your mobile platform that relates to what you're watching that you can do in a social environment that doesn't detract from what you're watching and, in fact, enhances it. I mean, that's media. MTV yeah. is in the cross-platform business. You are in the cross-platform business. I am in the cross-platform business. My little videos that I've done with you and others, as of right now, are closing in on 100,000 views, which isn't a lot in a commercial radio context, but uh, considering the vertical nature of my audience, the broadcast world, worldwide, yeah. that's a whole lot.